The regular season is over. Pitt is fourth in the ACC, the number four seed entering the ACC tournament this week. You know all of that. You know they finished with 21 wins. You know they closed out the regular season with a win over NC State at the Peterson Events Center on Saturday. And most of all, you know, somehow this team is still in the bubble. Somehow this team is still out of the bubble. Somehow this team is still in the next four out category, according to the all-knowing, all-seeing geniuses at ESPN. And we're not going to spend the entirety of this morning pit disparaging the bracketology of Joe Lenardi et al. But we will spend some serious time questioning it. Because you cannot convince me. And considering I'm the only one that's going to be talking for the next 20 minutes, you won't be able to convince me, literally, because I can't hear you. But you cannot convince me this is not an NCAA tournament team. And to leave them out of the NCAA tournament would be to deprive that tournament field of one of the best 68 teams in the country. Or one of the best 30-some at-large teams in the country. Let's talk about Pitt. Let's talk about the season. Let's talk about the finish to the season. Let's talk about why the Panthers should be in March Madness on today's Morning Pit to get your week started here on YouTube.com slash PantheLairCom. Yeah, it's Monday. It's the morning pit. It's youtube.com slash pantherlair.com. And I'm Chris Peak from pantherlair.com, panther lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com, the most comprehensive source of pit sports news on the internet, football, basketball, and recruiting. You find it all at pantherlair.com and message boards interact with hundreds and thousands of other pit fans. All day, every day, pit fans are hanging out and talking about pit sports at panther lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com. Dot com. It's the best online community of pit sports fans that you're going to find. We provide the content, and there is a great community to have a conversation about it. So go check it out. If you're a pit fan, pantalair.com. And then, of course, our YouTube channel right here, youtube.com slash pantalair.com, where we ask you to like this video and subscribe, and that way you don't miss any of our pit video content. And I know uh, our good friend Dick always likes to point out that I, I mentioned this too many times, but I keep mentioning it so you guys know it and will participate and be a part of it. We have a lot of stuff right here at youtube.com slash pantalaircom. We have our weekly live show that we do every Wednesday night at 8 o'clock or sometimes 8.30. We'll move it around, uh, but we'll definitely let you know what the plan is. We have live post-game shows that we do after every road basketball game, which means we will be live after the ACC tournament game on Thursday, whether Pitt is facing Wake Forest or Notre Dame or Georgia Tech. Whoever it may be, we will be live when that game ends, probably between 4 35 o'clock, I would say. Somewhere around there, we will have we will get started on a live post game show so you and I can interact and talk about it. And then of course we have these daily morning pit videos. Monday through Friday, we get together and talk a little pit sports to get your day started. Um, as you can imagine, there's a lot to talk about. Pit football is on spring break. Well, all of Pitt is on spring break this week, so spring camp is taking a break. They did one week of practice last week. They're off this week. They'll get back at it next week, and we'll talk some football later this week, maybe tomorrow or Wednesday. We'll see. Um, but for now, it's all about basketball. With the Panthers ending the season on Saturday with a win over uh, – <laughs> over NC State at the Peterson Event Center, a game where they led by 17, only to see NC State come back and cut it as close as three, and Pitt was able to hold on and pull out the win at the end, 81-73. A game that I, I have thoughts on, and I do, and I, I mean, there, there are lots of things to talk about from that game, I and mean, Bob Carrington was awesome again. You know, Blake Hinson, I, I wrote it in our staff picks preview uh, prediction column on, on Saturday. I was like, he's not going to finish his Peterson Event Center career with less than 20 points. And sure enough, he goes out and scores. We have 21 or 22. He had 21. Um, so just barely called that one. But it, it, Pitt just seemed to toy with NC State for the longest time. They didn't really do much in the first five, six minutes of the game. And then they went on a major tear to uh, really seemingly put NC State away. And then hit a lull in the second half. NC State was able to battle back, but Pitt held on and won the game. They got big contributions from the guys. They always get big contributions from, most notably, those four factors of production. Blake Henson, Bub Carrington, Jalen Lowe, and Ishmael Leggett. Federico Federico had a really good game. DJ Burns only scored nine points. Uh, a far cry from the game he had in Raleigh earlier in the season when he played against Pitt. DJ Horn missed most of um missed all of the second half uh 
uh, with it with an apparent injury. Uh, and so that certainly changed the complexion, but Jaden Taylor certainly made it up, you know, made up for it when he made four threes in the second half and, and scored a ton of points. I think he finished with like 28, but uh, so, I mean, we can spend a lot of time talking about that game and, and ordinarily that's what we would do here on the Monday edition of the morning pit. But with the ACC tournament starting this week, the, the postseason officially here, it's all about the NCAA tournament. And I mean, obviously, we'll be paying close attention and, and a lot of focus on that ACC tournament, uh, on the games that come. I, this is one of my favorite weeks of the year. It, I, to me, it rivals the NCAA tournament, you know, opening weekend when you get those games on Thursday and Friday. And there's just games all day long. I love that, but I love this conference tournament week. It's just fun to have games on, and and you know, particularly the conference that you watch the most, or the conference you cover the most. It's fun to see all those teams in one place, and they're all playing, and they're all playing back to back. I I, I really enjoy that. I, I'm a I'm a big fan of it. I used to love watching the Big East tournament, you know, all week long, and certainly that's the case here again with the ACC tournament. And if you ever get into a game that's a dog, there are other tournaments going on all day, every day throughout the week and so it's great it all starts uh uh tomorrow um you know I, I forget obviously you know paying attention to the notre dame georgia tech game chief among others uh before one of those teams faces wake forest on wednesday the winner of which will face Pitt on thursday but let's start right there because here Pitt is not playing a game until Thursday. And and the debate over whether they should or shouldn't get a double buy or whether that's better or worse to get a double buy or whether it would have been better for the team to get a single buy. I mean, we talked about all of that last week. It doesn't matter now. They ended up with a double buy. They ended up finishing fourth. Um, and, and earning that number four seed, the best seed they've ever earned in the ACC tournament. And obviously the first double buy they've ever earned in the ACC tournament. They've been a number five seed twice before, including last season when they finished tied for third and then tiebreakers dropped them down to the number five seed. But here they are as the number four seed getting a double buy, not playing until Thursday. And let's start with that because it wasn't that long ago. It was less than two months ago when this team was one in five in the ACC 10 and 7 overall and they were headed to Durham to face a Duke team that had just blown their doors off at the Peterson Event Center just like a week or two earlier and if and, and this will be a common refrain this week it's something people will talk about a lot this week and and it's I'm, I'm going to write about it on pantheloyer.com people talk about it on the message boards Jeff Capel talked about it on Saturday after the game if you if you could somehow Recall your mindset when they were going into that Duke game. Recall what you thought of the team, how you thought they were doing, where you thought they were, what you thought of them, and what you thought their future was and where they were going, not just this season, but beyond this season. It wasn't very good. They'd lost four out of five. Um, you know, the, the two Syracuse games, the Carolina game, the Duke game, the only game they won in that stretch once they started the full bore of the ACC schedule, it was a game at Louisville. But at that point, it sort of looked like, well, yeah, Louisville is obviously the worst team in the ACC, but Pitt's not far above them. And in the rankings, they weren't. They were 13th or 14th at that point. They had one win in six games. You know, when you include the, the Clemson game, that orphan Clemson game in early December. And we all know, like, I don't need to, like, belabor the point. I don't need to drag it out, with, you know, to try and be dramatic. We all know what happened we all know where things went from there we all know what happened in Durham and, and how they beat Duke and ultimately went on a run that led to Pitt going 11 and 3 over the final 14 games and we and I was sort of revisiting that game and, and looking at what happened and there, there were huge moments in that game Blake Hinson was part of a, a big part of you know pretty much all of them but uh, you know there were seven different guys who scored in the final like 13 minutes of that game uh, I think uh, one two Three, four, five different guys grabbed rebounds in the final 13 minutes of that game. Everybody made big shots. Blake Hinson made big shots. Ishmael Leggett had a big steal and fast break score. Uh, Zach Austin hit two big uh, free throws. Federico made a big free throw. He only made one, but it was a big one. It turned a five-point game into a six-point game, um, which was a big set or a four-point game into a five-point game. One, one or the other. It extended the lead at a crucial time when the lead needed to be extended. Guillermo Diaz-Graham had an assist 
uh, or did he have an assist or a, uh, he had some rebounds and, um, you know, had a big jump shot, had a big basket there. He had a block in the final 13 minutes. Jalen Lowe scored three baskets, made two huge threes. Bob Carrington made a big three. It was all these guys contributing. And it really put them on a roll. Because then they went to Georgia Tech and they won. And you know where it went from there. And there were there were hiccups along the way. The Miami game, which looks worse and worse and has looked worse and worse pretty much every day since that game. But then the Wake Forest and Clemson games. Both on the road, uh, or all three really on the road. They haven't lost at home since that last Syracuse game, which was another part of what really stung about that losing four out of five stretch is that uh, three of the four losses were at home. It looked like this team just couldn't take care of business at home. Well, they haven't lost at home since that. And so what you end up with is a team that goes 21-10. and 10. They finish fourth in, their, in a power conference. They have one of the highest road win totals of any power conference team. They've got seven road wins against power conference opponents. And they're playing as well as anyone right now, going 11-3 and three down the stretch. I don't know what's missing here. I don't know what's missing from the tournament resume. I, you you want to talk to me about weak non-conference schedule? Okay, fine. And everybody spent the month of March talking about how great, how smart the Big 12 was for scheduling crappy non-conference games. Well, that's what Pitt did. Why aren't we why are, why are we holding it against Pitt and not against other if anything should be held against Pitt or has been not, not I shouldn't even say should, but if anything has been held against Pitt is that the rest of the ACC is viewed as weak because not all of them scheduled the non-conference the way Pitt did. And yes, Pitt let that Missouri game get away from it, but as the bubble watch on ESPN pointed out, Northwestern, who seemingly has no questions about being an NCAA tournament team, lost at home to Chicago State. And and the bubble watch column is is something that really got in my head. Uh, it was published, check the date here, yesterday. It was published yesterday afternoon. And the line about Pitt was as follows. One might guess that a 21-10 and 10 team with a top 50 net ranking, vanilla resume metrics, and a win at Duke would land closer to the cut line than next four out. And here's the, here's the key spot. Here's the, the money line. This dynamic can arise when something worrisome, worrisome, <laughs> worrisome, this dynamic can arise when something worrisome lurks in an otherwise satisfactory profile. Bubble Watch hasn't deduced what that might be in this is instance exactly, even if Pitt did lose at home to Missouri. Like, I know I'm reading it, and so like you you can't see the words. You just kind of have to listen to me saying it. But again, something worrisome lurks in an otherwise satisfactory profile. Bubble Watch hasn't deduced what that might be in this instance. So, what like what you're saying is you don't even know why Pitt is on the bubble. You're looking at Pitt and you're saying, if we look at Pitt, you know, sort of blindly, it seems like a bubble team. It seems like they've got the resume of a bubble team. They've got the makeup of a bubble team. They've got good wins. They're finishing strong. They've got a top 50 net ranking. They won 21 games. Like, and all it ends up saying for, our, it says, quote, for our purposes, it's sufficient to note this is occurring it says the mocks tend to anticipate the committee's temperature extremely well. So Bubble Watch on ESPN written by uh, John Gassaway, whose byline claims he is an ESPN insider. Okay. His greatest line of insight on why Pitt is a bubble team is that all of the mock, dra mock brackets have Pitt as a bubble team. This is navel gazing. This is self. Uh, like, this thing is so because someone said it's so. And I don't really understand it and I can't define it. It doesn't seem so to me. But everyone else says the dress looks blue, so it must be blue. For, I mean, if you remember that meme, the dress was blue. Everyone else says the dress looks gold, so it must be gold, even though it looks blue to me. This looks like a tournament team. If this doesn't look like a tournament team, what does? This reminds me of like, I don't even need to go into analogies and comparisons and metaphors. What, what is, what is the holdup with this team? 
what makes them not attractive as an NCAA tournament team? I mean, like, it seems to me all the factors are there. It seems to me everything you would look be looking for is there. What did I just say? They were 10-7, and seven, and they finished on an 11-3 and three run. So it's a team that has improved. And it's not just a team that's playing well over the final two weeks of the season. This is 14 games. This is half the season. And they are playing decidedly better over that half of the season. You know, 11-3 and three in the final 14 games. They're playing well. They've gone on the road and won. They've taken care of business in their conference. You can't tell me that you're holding the ACC's perception against Pitt to, to that degree. I, like, you can't tell me there are 30 other teams more deserving of making the NCAA tournament than this one. You can't. You can't tell me that, and you can't just you can't justify it. Like this is the kind of team I want to see in the NCAA tournament, and not because they're like you know, fifteen and fifteen, but they've got a really great scorer or something like that. This is a team that won twenty one games. This is a team that finished strong, and they've got great players. The types of players that you want to put in the tournament, the types of players who deserve to be in the tournament on the basis of their own individual merit and on the basis of what their teams accomplished this season. If this isn't an NCAA tournament team, I really, really want to know what keeps them out. If you want to tell me the non-conference strength of schedule, okay. But as has been pointed out, they're far from the worst in that category. So what else? There's a few of those losses that we've talked about a number of times. The Missouri loss is a big one. Um, the Syracuse loss, uh, really both Syracuse losses. Uh, you, you know, if you want to tell me the Miami loss, but that was on the road. Uh, you know, maybe, I mean, the Clemson game at home uh, got away from them. Or not the Clemson game at home. The Clemson game on the road got away from them. It was an opportunity for a win. But what team doesn't have its blemishes? What resume doesn't have its weak spots or spots where, boy, they'd like to have that game back? And when you look at the Missouri game, you know, or, or you, you know, if you want to say, oh, they lost to Florida and Missouri in the non-conference, okay, but those games were November, first week of December. What this team has done, they are not the team they were that lost to Missouri. You know, they, and they're much better and they played much better and they haven't been fluky about it. Have they been inconsistent at times? Sure. But who hasn't? I think like, and I'm not going to sit here and, and talk metrics. I, 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 I don't have that vocabulary. You know, I, like, and, and I don't, I don't have all the numbers in front of me to, to sit here and say, well, here's why Pitt should be in. This is how their their numbers stack up. And and there's still more games to be played. There's still get more games for Pitt to play. And there's still more games for the teams around Pitt on the bubble to play. Uh, you know, where they could move up or down and Pitt could move up or down. And so to sit here and dive too deep into the numbers at this exact moment on Monday morning, you know, it, it I, I think there are better uses of our time. But if I sit back and I say, what kind of team do I want to see in the NCAA tournament? I want to see a team that won 20-plus games. I want to see the team that finished near the top of its conference. I want to see a team that has been playing really well down the stretch and ostensibly will continue playing well into the postseason. And I want to see a team with exciting players who are going to make for an exciting tournament. This is a a, a one-and-done uh, you know, postseason tournament that is, you know, a lot of the beauty of it is how fluky it can be, that a team can get hot. So give me the most exciting players. Give me the most exciting teams. Give me Blake Henson. Give me Bub Carrington and Jalen Lowe. Put these guys on the national stage where they belong, where for the last 14 games they have earned a place. And these guys have been remarkable in the last 14 games. Let, let's talk. You want to talk numbers. Here's, here's some numbers for you, okay? Of, of Henson, the, the four factors, right? Henson, Lowe, Leggett, and Carrington since the Duke game. Henson, 19.8 points per game. Over 14 games, he's averaging almost 20 points per game, 19.8. Low, 15 points per game. Carrington, or excuse me, Lowe is 13 points per game. Carrington is 13.9 points per game. 
Leggett is 12.3 points per game. Leggett and Carrington both averaging more than five rebounds per game. Low averaging 4.3 assists. Le- uh, Carrington averaging 3.7 assists. Henson shooting 51% from the field, 47% from three in the last 14 games. Low, 40% plus from the field and from three. Carrington, 42% from the field, 35% from three. And and we'll come back to Carrington in one second. Leggett, 44% from the field, 37% from three. Carrington, low, Leggett, all shooting 80% or better from the free throw line. This team in the last 14 games, averaging 75 points per game, shooting 45% from the floor, 39.4% from three. They're averaging 10.13 pointers per game. They're playing really, really well right now. And even the teams that beat them, Miami, Wake Forest, Clemson, if you ask them, hey, you want to play Pitt again? I mean, they're not going to say no, but they're going to tell you that's a dangerous team. That's a tough team. That's a hard team to beat because when they get hot, and they probably will get hot, you're in trouble. And that was the thing with this NC State game on Saturday. You know, NC State, let me get my notes out here. Um, to find that exact stretch. NC State was, uh, you know, there's a point like six minutes into the game where Carrington, Leggett, Lowe, Hinson had like six points. And I remember thinking, and I said, and I, and I think I even tweeted it, like this is where NC State needed to take advantage. NC State needed to go on a run here because you weren't going to keep all four of those guys subdued for the entire game. It was You might not get all four guys to go off, but at least two of them were going to get hot and probably three. And what you ended up with, Blake Henson, 21 points. You know, Bob Carrington, 23. Jalen Lowe had seven points, two rebounds, and two assists. Um, you know, Leggett ended up with nine points and eight rebounds. You know, so that night, Saturday, it was just Carrington and Henson. But you had to know you weren't going to keep those guys down forever because they're too good. They're too good of scorers. And low and legged are too. And you're going to get at least two of those guys hot every night. And sometimes three and sometimes four. And that's why they're such a dangerous team. That's why they've been playing so well. That's why they're on the roll they're on and they put themselves in position for a double buy in the ACC tournament. That's why they put themselves in a position to win one game and be in the semifinals of the ACC tournament. That's why they put themselves in position to be an NCAA tournament team. And we can and we can bring the. I'm not going to be that guy who says I don't care about any of the metrics and the resumes and all this stuff. Just tell me is the team a tournament team or not? Like, I'm not going to be that. I understand we have a lot of data to make some of these decisions, but we also should look at a team and say, are they a tournament team? Do they look like a tournament team? Have they performed like a tournament team? And again, we're not trying to rationalize our way into letting a 16 win team into the the, the uh, NCAA tournament here. We're talking about a team that has won 21 games with a chance to win 22, 23, or 24. And hey, if they get to 24, we don't have to care about having this debate and discussion. They're officially off the bubble at that point. And I mean, they could go on that run. I, I think it's, I mean, it's obviously unlikely. You know, they could go on that run. I it, Jim and I said last Thursday, or last Wednesday night, and, and I'll leave it on this. Jim and I said last Wednesday night during the live stream, I, I think the conclusion, what we agreed on was Pitt will make the NCAA. This was before the NC State game. So we said it, Pitt will make the NCAA tournament if, one, they beat NC State, take care of Saturday, and they win an ACC tournament game on Thursday. And this is before we knew they'd have the double bye. And so the, the idea being that if they get the double bye and win on Thursday to get to Friday, they're in. If they get the single bye, they win on Wednesday and Thursday to get to Friday, they're in. I'm still standing by that. I think if they beat, you know, probably Wake Forest, unless there's an upset and they face Notre Dame or Georgia Tech on Thursday, I, whoever they beat, I, I think if they win that game, they get to 22 wins, they get to the semifinal of the ACC tournament, I think they're in. I think they should be in. But I also don't think they should be next four out right now. So what do I know? What I, Here's what I know. It's going to be a fun week. It's going to be a fun week leading up to Thursday's game. It's going to be fun watching all the games leading up to that. It's going to be fun talking about this team heading into Thursday. And it's going to be fun just following everything um, that happens here. 
And then, uh, of course, talking about it right here on the Morning Pit. So don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, youtube.com slash pantherlair.com, and check out the website panther-lair.com, pittsburgh.rivals.com, to get all of your pit sports coverage. Don't miss anything. Pantherlair.com. All right, it's going to be a fun week. I'm excited. I hope you are, too. Look forward to uh, talking with you about it all week. Like and subscribe, and we will catch up with you tomorrow for the Morning Pit right here on youtube.com slash pantherlair.com.